Reslob, we've got to go back. We've got to save the past. Because this is a simple harmonic motion flashback. Or maybe it's the first time you've seen it. Either way, um, what we're talking about here is simple harmonic motion. If you've never seen it before, um, it's a really neat idea for the world of mechanics, and that's what we're going to be dealing with here, the world of mechanics, so objects moving, you know, left, right, up, down, back, forward, rotating. Um, but we actually are going to use this again whenever we talk about LC circuits, inductor capacitor circuits for AP Physics C E and M, electromagnetism. So we actually need this idea in both. Um, it's a very powerful thing in the world of physics uh, and will allow us to do a lot of very fascinating stuff. So let's kind of start off with this idea. Um, let's imagine I have a frictionless table and I attach uh, to like a wall a spring bloop, 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 with some spring constant. We'll go to spring constant K. And attached to that spring is a block with some mass M. And if I pull the spring back a little bit, what's going to happen when I let go? Well, it's uh, going to go back to the equilibrium position, but then it has some velocity, so it's going to overshoot it and compress the spring. It's going to stop here. It's going to slide back this way. It's going to be at max speed again, and then it's going to go a little bit further. It's going to, you know, elongate the spring, and then, it, oh, the spring's going to pull it back, and then it's going to go a little further, and then, oh, blah, 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 back and forth forever. You get the idea. It's just going to oscillate. And it could oscillate left and right like this. Uh, you get a similar idea if you hang a spring and you bob it up and down. Uh, similar thing with a pendulum rocking back and forth like this. So these are all simple harmonic motions. There is a restoring force that is pulling the object back to an equilibrium position, um, but it overshoots and it continues this uh, restoring force to move it back and forth over and over and over again. Okay. What we're going to take a look at here is two examples. This uh, mass spring system. We're also going to look at a pendulum system and we're going to see just how these harmonic equation ex uh, equations are set up and how we can think about them. So one of the things that we'll need to be thinking about for harmonic motions like this is the greatest equation to ever exist, F equals MA, Newton's second law. And when we take a look at this um, and we take a look at our you know, block and spring system, well, what's the force acting on the block spring system? Well, it's due to the spring. The spring is a restoring force that's causing a either pull or a push to bring the block back to its equilibrium position. And by Hooke's law, we know that the force due to a spring is equal to negative kx, where the negative is a restoring, so it's always going uh, against the direction of elongation or compression. Um, k is some spring constant, and x is that displacement uh, that has been moved. Um, and this is equal to ma, which is a cool thing. Now, we're going to write something a little weird here. Uh, if we recall, and uh, if we've taken a calculus course, this is very familiar to us, but if we've never seen it, um, maybe we recall from our position velocity acceleration graphs. If you have a position and you take the slope of that graph, you'll get the velocity. And if you take the slope of the velocity graph, you're going to get an acceleration. Well, in the world of calculus, we wouldn't just call this a slope, we'd call this a derivative. Which means that the second order derivative of the position is going to be the acceleration. So you could say here that your acceleration vector is the second order derivative with respect to time of position, but we're going to write it in a kind of weird way. We're going to write it as x dot dot two dots for the second derivative, okay? And yes, some of you might want to write this as like x prime prime. I don't like writing the primes. It's just, this is how we kind of do things in high level mechanics for physics. Uh, so we're gonna to stick to that notation, okay? So I'm gonna replace this x dot dot in for the acceleration because that's what it means. And when I do this, I'm gonna get an equation where it's gonna read mx dot dot equals negative kx. And I've removed the vector symbols here simply because I'm not worried about that anymore. Uh, I'm just worried about, you know, I know this object's going to be moving back and forth in a harmonic motion, so it makes sense in the problem. Um, so I just want to have uh, like variables here, like x's and x. And if I make one final move and just divide each side by m, I get the following thing. I get that x dot dot is equal to negative k over m x. 
And this is actually a very, very powerful equation here. Um, if you're familiar with harmonic oscillators, you might, for a spring at least, uh, for a mass spring system, you might remember that the omega value for these is the square root of k over m, which, hey look, don't we have that right here? Which means that we could write this equation as x double dot equals negative omega squared x. So while this is right here, um, specifically for the mass spring system, this here in pink, this is for any general system. This is a general oscillation equation for a simple harmonic motion, where maybe this omega is going to change. Specifically, you know, we could get this for a spring mass spring system, but generally, this will be our equational form. We'll have a second derivative of something equals negative omega squared multiplied by x. And why is that? Why is this our general form here? Well, let's take a look at this idea. I need this form to be some variable x. I need the second derivative of it to equal the same thing just multiplied by some constant squared out in front. And how could we do that? Well, let's just guess some equations here, okay? If we guessed a constant for x, then when I take a derivative of it, I'm gonna get zero and that's not gonna work. So I need to pick an equation or an equational form that when I take derivatives of it, it looks very similar. And when I take a second derivative, it looks the exact same. One equation we could set up is a cosine equation. Because when I take the derivative of cosine, I'm going to get a negative sine, and then I'm going to get the negative cosine after that uh, derivative again. But instead of just saying of theta here, I'm going to take this of omega t plus phi. Recall that omega is an angular velocity. It represents um, how quickly we're moving in circular motion or how quickly we're just going back and forth because circular motion can be thought of as an oscillation. Time just being how much time is ticking here. And then phi here, um, this is just our phase shift, a phase constant. It's just where do you start? Do you start in the center? Do you start at the edge? Where are you starting? So this equation is actually very helpful because when I take the first derivative here, x dot, um, recall taking the derivative of the cosine, we take the derivative of the inside first with respect to time, because that's what we're taking derivatives here. So we're going to get a omega here, because that omega comes out. And then this will be negative sine omega t plus phi. And when I take the derivative of that for my second derivative, I'm going to pull another omega out, so negative omega squared cosine omega t plus phi. Now, it's pretty obvious to see that, hey, look, cosine of omega t plus phi, that's up here. That's just equal to x. So we could just say that x double dot will equal negative omega squared x, which is exactly what our generalized equation will be. And for a cosine function, we know that cosine functions are going to oscillate up and down, back and forth. So that's what we're going for here. Um, we want this general equation. This general equation is going to be what we're looking for all the time. Uh, a second derivative will equal negative omega squared x for every single simple harmonic oscillator. The only change will be what is that value of omega. That will dictate everything. Okay, And we saw for our mass spring system, omega was equal to the square root of k over m. So we get this just right here. Okay, Let's take a look then at something a little different, something like a mass pendulum system, and just make sure that I'm not going crazy and that this does work out correctly. So let's go over here and let's look at a mass pendulum system, Okay, or just a pendulum system. So here's the ceiling, boop, 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 boop. and here is some pendulum hanging from it. And uh, you know, here's the bob at the end. And we're going to say that this pendulum um, is only oscillating at small angles. And we'll see why that is the case in a second. So this is a small angle pendulum. Pendulum. OK. Well, this pendulum has some length L here. Uh, how can we get what's going on here? Well, we want to start for mechanics with F equals MA. But this pendulum is not moving left to right or up and down. It's 
moving in an arc, right? So instead of using f equals ma, let's use the rotational analog to this. Let's use torque equals i alpha. Hoo -hoo. The reason why this works so well is that if we use torque equals i alpha, we can look at what forces are causing this to move in this arc and then use a similar property that we did before. Well, if we look at the torques um, uh, acting on this, we will see pretty quickly that while gravity or the weight is acting straight down, mg, we can break that weight vector up into two other vectors. We actually have a component acting uh, tangential to the curve here, mg sine of theta, and a component acting, you know, if this is a tension here, a component acting opposite of the tension is the mg cosine of theta term. Now what's so nice about this is if we take a look at this mg sine of theta term, that's, the tor that's actually a torquing force acting there. And I can represent this torque as r cross f, which will equal i alpha. If I replace r cross f, and if you remember the cross product, there's technically a sine term there, but because we're nice and at 90 degrees for our radial position and our force, uh, that sine term will just be one, so who cares? So my radial position is L, and when I multiply that by force, it's gonna be mg sine of theta. When I equal this to I alpha, well, for a point mass at some distance away, that's just mr squared. And our r value being L, it's just gonna be ml squared. The real kicker here in the physics intuition is that I don't wanna put the term alpha. Alpha is an angular acceleration. How did we get it? Well. We started from an angular position. We then went to an angular velocity. And then we went to an angular acceleration, which means that I can write ex angular acceleration as the second derivative of the position. So I'm gonna write this as theta double dot. Now why would I do that? Well, some L's go away, some M's go away, because it's mechanics and that happens a bunch. And what we'll quickly see here, if I divide by the L here to the other side, I'm gonna get that theta double dot is gonna equal G over L multiplied by the sine of theta. And this looks very, very similar to what we had over here. The X double dot equals negative omega squared X. But instead of X's, we've got a theta. Now, something that's very fascinating regarding sine um, is that for small angles, generally below 15 degrees, you could actually rewrite the sine of theta as just theta, okay? And if you go into your calculator uh, in radians and you type in like sine of 0.05, you're gonna get 0.05 or something very, very close to it. So what we can say here is that theta double dot equals G over L theta. And because we know that this pendulum is always a restoring force, that negative appears out in front because it's always acting against the direction of the motion, which means that if this G over L here is supposed to equal omega squared, when I take the square root of it, I know that the square root of G over L will equal omega. So that's a very powerful thing for us to do here with that. It's the same equation, um, or the same equational form, but for a totally different problem. This is a pendulum moving back and forth as opposed to a mass spring oscillator drifting left and right. Now, this equational form, x double dot equals negative omega squared x, is going to be super powerful because when we go into uh, E and M, when we talk about LC circuits, we're not gonna be talking about F equals MA there. We're talking about circuitry. But what we can talk about are Kirchhoff loops. And when we discuss Kirchhoff loops, we can start putting in terms that are differentials of previous terms. We can get the second derivative of something uh, to equal some initial term there, which gives us our equational form that we are looking at in our two examples here. So. If you're looking at LC circuits, jump into those videos next. We'll start setting up some Kirchhoff loops and doing this exact same thing, thinking about how the second derivative is equal to the original function, um, which is some extra terms there, and we'll be going through that as well. Okay, But for right now, um, this simple harmonic uh, motion video is finished. Um, like I said, this 
the way to write this is it's so powerful. You use it so often in the world of physics. Um, you can get so much out of it, and it allows you to quickly do some really challenging problems. Uh, you know, whenever you're looking at things. So I highly recommend that you take some time, really think about this. If you're taking the mechanics test, this will pop up. Um, and being able to just do it very quickly is an important feature uh, to help you out, save you some time. And if you, like I said, if you're doing the LC circuits next, if this was a flashback for you, um, then note, you already know what you're doing here. We're just gonna do it for circuitry now, okay? So like I said, this is finished. Adios, everybody. Y'all take it easy.